everybody. So uh, today we will be uh, starting our first lecture on uh, geometrical optics. Okay. So um, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when we talk of um, well uh, geometrical optics? I suppose uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is you know the passage of light through lenses, how uh, you know, so curved lenses that is a convex lens or a concave lens or maybe reflection uh, from uh, curved mirrors. So, um, but one has to realize that this is rather pretty old subject, this is rather a pretty old subject in physics. We have been we have been doing things for hundreds of years. In fact, um, it is uh, the uh, it is the use of these lenses and mirrors uh, which had a huge role in the development of astronomy. For example, uh, Galileo was the one who used uh, uh, you know, just two lenses, he just used two lenses and then put it in a cylindrical tube and uh, he, he, he watched the moons of Jupiter and he made the certain astronomical observations. So in a sense, uh, well this subject is, uh, it is it's, uh, it's one of the primary uh, things which was, uh, which was responsible for, for advancements in, uh, in, uh, in astronomy and not only in astronomy, I mean not only in physics for that matter, I mean if you think of uh, the simple magnifying glass okay, to look at small things. I mean I, I, I bet the modern biology owes its origin to uh, the observation of small things, right. So uh, the study of geometrical optics had uh, rather far reaching consequences not only in the development of um, optics but uh, also in other branches of physics and also in other branches of science, right. So, um, the, now that we know that it is an important thing to study although it is an old subject, um, what, what, rather what is the uh, area of applicability, okay. So rather at what uh, uh, wavelength range, range should we apply geometrical optics. Now wh why do I say that? Because at the back of your mind you also have things like uh, diffraction, interference uh, which have, have been explained so well with, uh, uh, with the electromagnetic waves. Okay, so uh, what is the area of applicability here? For that, let us draw a, a simple diagram and define our area of applicability. Um, so let us say we have a small slit or a small hole, okay, and we are going to put um, some, some source in front of that, okay, some, some source of light uh, in front of that, right. Now we put a screen a little distance away from this hole or from this slit. Now what do we expect to observe? Well, I mean we have a reasonably big hole here, so we can draw these two lines, okay, I will come to this point that we are drawing lines here and then we observe the image of this, of this slit or this hole on, on this, um, on the screen, so on this screen now which is kept at a certain distance away from, uh, uh, from the slit, okay. Now if you observe, you have sharp boundaries for this image, okay, and you, you just observe only one image of this hole, then I am sure you are going to say that we are in this regime of uh, geometrical optics. Now why? I mean look at the other, uh, look at the other extreme, I mean if, we, if your hole is small enough, uh, you will have, uh, if your hole is small enough, uh, let us say, let me draw another picture. If your hole is small enough, you, uh, you can have uh, and then you put a source of light here, I call this some source. You are going to have, uh, you are going to have uh, alternate regions of light and, and dark regions, okay. Now, that is diffraction. So you have alternate regions of uh, light and dark regions here. So uh, but the field of geometrical optics would not concern 
such a thing would not would not concern would not be too concerned with 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 this diffraction okay but uh, would be talking of things in which uh, when you, when you have a slit okay the image of the slit is very well defined on the on the uh, on the screen now when does that happen well that happens if the uh, size of the slit that you have taken okay let's say the size of the slit is d now that is much much greater than the the wavelength of light that you've used okay so this is uh, one important um, one important criterion for the application of geometrical optics okay and um, well if it's actually if it's not if the uh, if the slit dimension is some way it's very near or comparable to the uh, dimensions of the wavelength okay uh, you will as i said you will have to deal with things like diffraction okay so this is one thing about uh, the uh, about the sizes the second thing is a bit involved but then it's another conceptual uh, con uh, it's a, con a conceptual thing it's that the um, the light or the energy of the of the photon in this case okay uh, should be lesser than the energy sensitivity of the instruments that you're using so it should not interact with the uh, with the instruments okay so basically you are not in the quantum region uh, quantum regime here so we are still in this classical regime and we'll be using uh, you know what we what we call as these lines or these rays of light let me draw it once again so these are the rays of light by which you're going to get some sharp images on the screen okay now what are these rays of light these rays of lights are nothing but uh, infinite infinitesimally thin um, so these will be using the rays of light okay so and they are the infinitesimally uh, thin um, beams of light okay now for that re uh, for that reason uh, for that reason uh, geometrical optics is also called uh, ray optics okay so that's what we are going to study we are going to study ray optics or geometrical optics here okay now let's do one more thing now now that we know that we have uh, we're going to deal with rays okay so the next question to ask is uh, what part do these uh, rays take okay so the question that we ask ourselves is uh, what part does the uh, does the uh, does the ray of let's say the ray of light take okay now this was something which uh, which bothered many people and quite quite early and apparently uh, people had lots of ideas well they said that oh it will follow the uh, least distance between two points well if it's the same medium uh, that's fine i mean the least distance is fine but that may not be the case in which you have um, you have in media of different refractive indices in between okay now i'll come to that again now apparently there's a principle which tells you uh, what path the ray of light will take well it's called the fermat's principle or uh, in its original form it's also called the principle of least time okay so we'll be talking of the, the fermat's principle or the uh, principle of least time well it simply states that uh, well the ray of light will follow that path from one point to another in which you know i have point a and point b well i uh, you can take uh, whatever refractive index in between well it's it will follow from point a to point b the path in which um, the time taken will be the least will be the minimum one 
Okay, so that was Fermat's principle in its original, uh, um, uh, in its original form. So that's what Fermat said that uh, light is going to travel from A and B. Okay, and the path it's going to take and it's going to take is that for which the time is going to be minimum. So instead of this path or the other path, the one from A to B will be the one, uh, the, the, the one the light will take, uh, the, the ray of light will take rather, will be the one in which the time taken is the least. Okay. Now apparently uh, the whole of geometrical optics can be, can be derived in principle from this one simple concept. Okay. So that is how important it is. Okay, they are there, well in its, uh, this is the statement uh, in its original form, it is the principle of uh, least time. Um, but I will come a little later on, uh, on some modifications, but uh, let me just, uh, you know, tell you two or three consequences of uh, Fermat's principle. Okay. So, let us just... Uh, one or two consequences of Fermat's principle. Consequences of uh, okay. oh. Fermat's uh, principle. Well, uh, the first is that if from point A to point B, let us say light is travelling and uh, it has taken the path of least time, so point A to point B, suppose this is the path and this is the path of least time from point A to point B. Well, if I start from point B to point A, the, uh, the light will actually take the same path back. Okay, so, if it was the least time on one way, so it will be on the other way also, it will be the least time compared to other paths. Okay. Now, this is called the uh, principle of uh, reciprocity. Okay. So, it, it retraces its path back. So, this is the uh, principle of uh, reciprocity. Okay. Second thing. Uh, is about, uh, well, I mean, what comes to my mind is, I mean, I started this talk on, the, you to talk uh, by, by talking of some lenses, okay. So, let us draw a lens, let us draw a simple convex lens, okay. And on the axis, so light, so let us say I have uh, some point on the axis on the left hand side here, okay. So, this is my convex lens. And then, let us say the light from this point actually comes and then hit, comes here and then well, I have, uh, well, it comes on the other side. Okay. So, this is the object distance and this is the, let us say the image distance which I know, denote by V. Okay. Now, there are, well, there are infinite paths of light. Let us just take two or three of them. You know, there is one path which goes entirely through air. Okay, so, the one up at this point and then comes and comes back here. There is one which goes partly through air which is actually along the axis okay. and then there is one part which goes through the lens and then comes through and then comes and uh, travels in air to reach uh, at the image point. Okay. Now, if you look at these two points, the length of these two points are different, the, the path lengths are different. Okay the actual length from on the axis that is the least compared to compared to uh, uh, the uh, length when it goes to the tip of the lens and then comes to uh, the image point. Okay. Now, however, by the principle of least time you can you can argue that the time taken by these two light rays, okay, by this one, the one in which I, I have drawn um, the one goes to the tip and then comes to the image point and the one in which it passes through the, uh, you know, which is uh, along the axis of the lens, okay. They both of them take the same time, 
okay. Otherwise, you are not going to have an image uh, on the other side. Okay. So, of course, um, I can also um, uh, derive the uh, simple laws of reflection and refraction using uh, Fermat's uh, principle. Okay. But before that, um, I wish to uh, remind you once again about, well, let, uh, maybe I haven't, haven't said this before, is about the, uh, the statement of Fermat's principle. Uh, well, now we, we do not say that uh, the time taken is minimum. What we say is that uh, the light will follow that path, so from A and B. So, Fermat's principle, the way we say it now, Fermat's uh, principle is that uh, light will follow that path, will uh, follow that path for which the uh, the the time taken is uh, the time taken is actually an extremum is uh, actually an extremum compared to the nearby paths okay extremum compared to what compared to uh, uh, to uh, nearby paths. Now, when I say an extremum, I do not actually specify whether the time is actually minimum or maximum, it is an extremum. Okay. So, um, uh, pictorically or di diagrammatically, how do I write that? I mean, I have point A and point B, okay. let us say point A and point B. Now, there are actually infinite number of paths which connect point A and point B. Okay. Now, what it tells, what Fermat's principle tells is that uh, light will follow that path for which, for which the time taken is actually an extremum compared to these paths. Okay. Compared to, for example, it will be, it will follow the path in which I have, I have shown by a solid line okay. uh, as opposed to and that will be an extremum path. Uh, compared to, let us say, uh, the, uh, the, the ones which I show by the, uh, the dashed lines. Okay. So, that is how we know uh, Fermat's principle now. Now, this is actually uh, a far reaching consequence of uh, the principle of uh, least action or again it is the Hamilton's uh, principle in mechanics. Okay. Now, uh, let us, let us, as I said, uh, we can derive the laws of reflection and refraction from Fermat's principle. Let us see how we can do that. Okay. And so, that will give us some more um, <coughs> confidence about uh, uh, the applicability of this, uh, of this theorem, of this principle rather. Okay. So, um, we want to check what happens during reflection. Draw a figure first. So, here we have a mirror, a plane mirror, let us say, and say we have a point A and a point B. So, let us say we have a point A and a point B. Now, the thing that we want to do here is that we want a ray of light <coughs> to, to come and hit the mirror reflection and go to B. Now, which direction should it go? Well, common sense and what we have learnt in school is that, well, it should go in a such a way that the angle of reflection should be equal to the angle of, ref, uh, angle of incidence rather should be equal to the angle of uh, reflection. Okay? Now, why is that? Because you see, from going from path, uh, going uh, from point A to B, 
via the mirror, I can actually have an infinite number of paths. Okay. Now, why should light choose the, uh, the one in which uh, the angle of uh, incidence is equal to the angle of reflection? Let us let's find out using Fermat's principle. Okay. So, let us draw, let's draw a normal at the point of incidence okay. and consider that this point A is at an height h1 from the mirror, point B is at an height um, h2 and the, uh, and the distance on the mirror, um, you know, the distance of the mirror is L, let us say. And uh, let us also think that um, the, um, the distance at which the light strikes the mirror, that is that is x. Okay. So, so, let me see, and have I drawn all the, uh, all the distances? Yes, I have taken the, uh, the, distance, the, the distance in the mirror, the distance where it um, hits, um, the light hits the uh, mirror is incident on the mirror. Okay, so, I have not drawn the angle of incidence. Let me call this I okay. and the other one here is the angle of reflection. Let me call this R. So, and this is the normal. Okay. So, the one this, uh, this dotted line is the normal and I bet you are going to say that what will be this angle? This angle is also R and this angle is I. Okay. And these are all right angle triangles. Okay, so let me. Okay, so let me. I haven't um, uh, labeled these points. The height of this is P. Let me call the point at which the light is incident as O, and let me also call this height so B. This is Q. Okay, so PQ is L, PO is X, some distance. Okay, and um, the height. Uh, from the mirror is H1 here and the height from the mirror, uh, height of the mirror of B is H2. Okay. Now, the, the thing, uh, now the question that I am trying to address here is, I mean light comes and hits uh, um, the mirror at a, at, a, at a distance x here. Well, it could have, it could have hit a little bit. Uh, uh, I mean, if it hits at x, what happens to the angles? This is one thing, or to uh, or to put it in another way around. I mean, uh, why should it hit only at x? It can hit at the other places and come to b. Okay. Now, which is the one according to Fermat's principle should be the path of um, the light here? Okay. So let's let's do this. Um, what's the time it takes for light to go from so? time to to, uh, to to travel let's say to travel the distance a o b this distance a o b let me say let me call that time t and the, the velocity of light in this medium okay so let me say this medium itself is air so velocity of light let's say uh, is c or the speed of light is c okay so what's the distance a o well, the distance A O is nothing but uh, H1 square plus X square pi by C. That is the time it takes to travel the distance A O and the distance O B. So, that will be um, square root of H2 square plus L minus X uh, squared divided by C. Okay. Now, what do I do now? Now, I say that the time um, will be I mean, compared to different paths, compared to its neighboring or, or nearby paths. So, this is going to be, um, I am going to have, uh, this is going to be a, uh, an extremum. Okay? So, that is what I have. So, I have, uh, let, me, let me do this, dt dx. So, this is equal to, uh, what is dt dx? I am going to take an 1 by c here, that is the speed of light, that is a constant thing. I am going to differentiate the 1 
in the um, in the square root. So, I will have a 2 x at the top and then if I differentiate this entire thing. So, I am going to have a 2 times uh, root over h 1 square plus x 1 squ x square in the denominator. What about the 1 on the on the uh, for the for the path O B? So, this is um, twice uh, L minus x. So, I am going to uh, differentiate uh, this point h, h 2 squared plus L minus x whole square and the square root of that. So, that is equal to twice of uh, uh, h 2 squared plus L minus x whole square. Uh, okay, so, I have not taken the minus sign out. So, because L minus x, okay, fine. I put a minus sign here and then there is an 1 by c. Okay. So, when I say it is an extremum, I am going to put this equal to 0. So, which immediately tells me that uh, x by root over h 1 plus x square is equal to L 1 minus x h 2 squared plus L minus x root of that. So, what does this tell us? So, it tells us that if I want the, the time to be an extremum okay, compared to all different paths light can travel. Now, if this is the path light should travel, okay, I better have x by, well I should have put an h 1 square plus x square root over of that. That should be equal to L minus x h 2 square plus L minus x whole square root square of that. Now, what does this mean? Let us look at this figure. Let us look at this triangle APO. Okay. Now, what is x? What is x divided by, um, by h 1 square by x 1 square by x square? Okay. So, um, let us look at uh, triangle um, APO. Okay. Let us look at the figure triangle APO. Now, in triangle APO, what is the uh, sign of the angle I? Well, it just happens to be x by x by uh, the distance um, h 1 square by x square. Okay. Now, compare that in triangle B O Q, what is the uh, sign of the angle R? Okay. Now, these are what? So, sign of the angle R is L minus x divided by h 2 square plus L minus x whole square and take the square root of that in the denominator. So, which tells you immediately here that uh, light will travel that path in which I am going to have just the, you know, in, in this same medium, uh, the uh, sign of this angle I is equal to the sign of this angle r or in other words I need this angle i to be equal to the angle r which is actually the familiar laws of uh, uh, the, uh, the reflection that you have. Okay. So, well to think of this uh, as a mechanics problem uh, is also quite interesting. Actually if you, uh, if you, if you uh, give, if you give, if you set a problem like this that I want to run from point A to let us say point B by touching some wall okay, which is P Q. Now, which path should I take? So, that uh, the time taken will be the least here. Okay. Well, actually we will be taking that path for which uh, you know the point at which you hit the wall and it, then you draw a normal to that, then you find an angle. Okay that should be equal and you still call that an angle of incidence okay should be equal to the, um, the the angle that you make with the normal when you run away from the wall to reach point b okay so this again will actually follow from the uh, law of the principle of least action in mechanics but right now we are doing geometrical optics we are dealing with light rays of light so and we've just now verified again uh, the uh, the laws of uh, reflection uh, using Fermat's 
principal. Okay. Now, with this uh, basic uh, verification, how about uh, doing it for the uh, for diffraction? Okay. So you can always say that okay, fine, I have done this for a medium in which the refractive index is the same, right? So your your the reflection is in this in this region in which um, you know in the in the region uh, A O B that's in a region where uh, the refractive index is the same. Okay. So let's find out uh, what it is going to be when uh, you have two different media. Let's draw a figure once again. So, okay, so we have two media, okay, which is infinite on both sides, let's say. So in one side, the refractive index is N1 and on the other side, the refractive index is N2. Okay. Now you have you have you are at point A, let's say, and you wish to go to point uh, some other point. Okay. Now, what is the point? Uh, what is the um, direction that you need to follow? Okay. Uh, in case um, you want to go to point A to point B, um, is it is it this straight line? should draw the point P here. Is it the straight line? Well, that is the distance, that is the least distance. But then remember that the speed of light is different in these two media. Okay. So the time taken is necessarily not um, the same if you uh, go, uh, it is definitely not the same when you, if you, if you follow a straight line or let us say you travel this much in, in one media and then the other here or let us say you travel this much in media in medium 1 and then the one here. Well, it is more like you, you, you are on let us say N1, so this is region 1, let us say this is land and then N2 this is some water. Okay, you want to go from point A to point B. Okay. What do you do? Do you jump straight, you, you go straight into, do you go straight uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the shore where, where, where water is and then swim all the way to B? Okay, or do we go? Do you want to minimize your swimming because you know swimming? That's that's a bit tougher than just running on land, okay? Because of resistance. So do you maximize your path on land? Okay, let's say you come here, and then you swim a little bit in the sea or in water. Let's let's not bring in sea or anything else in water. So which path should you take? Well, the problem is the same. So let's redraw this figure once again. And uh, and um, label it. So let's say you need this to be the path, and this is how you wish to go. Because you are in point A, and this is the point you are incident on on the interface of both the media. So you want to go to point B here. Let us say again I call this distance, let me call this distance, uh, well this distance H1, this point as P, this point of contact within these two media where light comes and hits as O and then B and this to be H2 and then I call this PQ, so this point is Q. Okay. Now I again take this distance, so this distance is fixed, this distance PQ, this distance PQ, this is let us say let us call that as L, distance L. Let me call PO, so that is X, okay, so that is variable. Where do I want, where do I want to hit the surface here? Do I want to hit it here, here, here or here, so that the time it takes compared to all these paths to go from point A to point B is an extremum. Well, let us do that. So definitely what is point OQ? So this is L minus X. Okay. So what is the time it takes to travel this distance AO? Okay. So the time again to travel AOB, this distance AOB. 
So, this is let us say capital T. So, what is this distance by the way? So, this distance is A O um, in medium 1, okay, where I have the refractive index N 1. Now, how is um, the velocity or the speed of light related with the refractive index? Well, if the uh, speed of light in vacuum, air in vacuum, let us say is C and then I divide that in a medium where the speed of light is V, then the refractive index is N, right. So, what do I get? So, the velocity of light in a certain medium which has a refractive index N, uh, which has a refractive index N is nothing but C by N, where C is the velocity of light and or the speed of light in vacuum and then N is the one in, um, or N is the refractive index here. Okay. So, the time it takes to go uh, to, to do the distance A O, what is that? Well, let us um, find the distance. So, the distance is, so, so this is x, okay. So, this is nothing but uh, again h 1 squared by x square. Now, you know, need to divide this by the velocity uh, in medium 1. Uh, or the speed in medium 1, which is C by N 1, because you are in medium 1. And now, we need to add again. So, this is the time it takes uh, for light to cover, traverse this distance A O. Okay. Now, what about um, this distance O B? Well, that is H 2 squared plus L minus X whole squared divided by C by N 2. Remember, the the speed of light um, in the, in medium 2, I call that velocity V2 and that is again dependent on the refractive index. The speed, uh, the C is the uh, speed of light in free space or, or the speed of light in vacuum, let us say. Right. Now, we need to uh, take the next minimum of this. So, which means we simply take dt dx is equal to 0. So, which tells us that uh, well, C and N and all these things are constants here. So, we need to differentiate this entire um, expression with, with respect to uh, with respect to x. So, what is that? So, that is uh, N 1 by C. I am going to take a 2 x upstairs and so and then I differentiate that that will be. So, that is H 1 squared plus x squared. So, differentiate 2 uh, x squared. So, I get a 2 x here. And then again h1 squared by x squared. So, this half by this entire thing to the power 1 minus half. So, that is okay. So, the square root comes down. And then I have uh, again uh, n2 by c, the other one. I get an okay. So, l minus 1, l minus x. So, I will have a minus sign here. And so, I get a 2 of l minus x. Okay, and again um, h2 squared plus l minus x whole squared. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so what is the point? Um, uh, well, what is the time light will take once it goes from point A to B and via this, uh, via this, uh, from one medium to another? So we were we were calculating the time. And the time uh, it takes to travel from A to A, A O B, we have calculated that. Now we are extremizing. We are doing d t d x is equal to zero. We are trying to find out uh, what's the extremum of that. We have found a condition. Okay. Now what's that condition once again? We've just found uh, the condition that um, n one over c. Remember n one is the refractive index in um, in medium one. So times x by root over h 1 squared plus x squared and that should be equal to n 2 over c root over um, uh, n 2 over c and then l minus x uh, root over h 2 squared plus x squared. Okay. Now, what was the thing that we were doing? We were, um, we were looking at refraction okay, so from medium 1 to medium 2. Okay. Now, this angle was i, let us say that is the angle of um, incidence and then this was height h 1. So, this was x, so this was a, it is at b, 
and then the angle of refraction was r okay so this distance was h2 and uh, so this was p and this was q so and oq this was l minus x fine definitely this angle that's angle obq that's also r okay now you've got a relation uh, regarding some uh, the refractive index times something times x x by something some distance okay so let's find what that angle is oh by the way so this if this angle is the angle of incidence the angle um, p a o okay that angle is also i right so in in triangle a p o what do i have sin i to be i have sin i to be x by the distance a o which is nothing but root over h1 squared plus x squared and in triangle um, b o q what is uh, the the sign of angle r well sign of angle r nothing but l minus x divided by um, root over of h2 squared plus x squared therefore when we come back to our old equation which we have got by uh, by taking the uh, time to be by by um, making the time to be an extremum okay is uh, if we substitute it back into our old equation when we were this equation here this one what we get is n1 sin of i is equal to the is equal to this value n2 sin of r okay where i is the angle of incidence that's the angle with which uh, the light makes or the ray of light makes with the normal when it strikes the boundary of these two media and then r is the angle that the angle in which uh, light emerges in medium 2 okay now this you know everybody knows as this as snell's law in optics now you see that we have simply obtained the snell's law in optics using uh, fermat's principle okay and uh, remember this mechanics problem i was telling you so if you wish to go from point a to point b let's say and then uh, the region 1 was land and region 2 was water okay so what's the uh, what's the route you need to take i mean you better take the root a o b okay so that's also uh, the thing uh, you can work out using the principle of um, uh, least action or the in mechanics right so uh, to summarize what we have done today so we have talked of uh, the uh, beginning of geometrical optics we've talked of the uh, the fundamental guiding principle uh, in geometrical optics which is fermat's principle which actually tells you how um, the path of a ray of light okay so we have done that for uh, reflection from a plane mirror and um, we have also seen the path of light uh, the ray of light will take when it goes from one um, one medium to another okay and in doing so what we have also found is that we are right because we have uh, reproduced the uh, familiar laws of uh, reflection and the um, and the familiar laws of um, refraction here fine that's snail's law so thank you very much